Hey, shalom, shalom. It's following the shoe. Welcome again to the Rock. I'm just answering a couple questions in this video. I've been asked, uh, what do you use to cook? You know, you, people saw the outdoor cook station, the burners and the stove, but what do you use? Well, as you can see right there, that's what we use. Simple sticks. What? What is this? What? This video is not for you. Chickens. You better be careful. You're gonna end up in here. Uh, we use the sticks, and you can see how many things we have cooking on the stove right now. That's what we use, and our and the land is full of that sort of fuel. So what we have is I have a 55 gallon barrel that I cut in half right here, and we just pile it up with sticks and wood and stuff you find on the land when we go for our walks, and I mean a lot of this stuff can simply come from you know cutting down a tree I don't know if you can see right there the trees that we cut down and remove the limbs you just limb it all and uh, or bark anything you know when I chop wood uh, for the winter um, the pieces and chunks that fall off we'll use that but you can use anything and that's one thing that you you will never run out of this but the purpose of this video wasn't that I just wanted to answer the question what do we use to uh, cook, you know, what fuel do we use? Uh oh, there goes Ebony, she's gonna be throwing a couple pieces in. Yep, yep, you see how scientific this is? This is how scientific this is. This is exactly how we cook out here, and it's big enough that they don't often have to break the pieces, as you just heard her break the piece. Uh, <laughs> but that's how we do it. But on um, the purpose of this video, also was this people ask all the time, What do you do with your wood ash? Well, let me just show you some of the things that I do. Wood ash, first of all, if you look in here, you'll see something. Does anybody know what this is? It's charcoal. It's charcoal. So one of the things that I use, especially my charcoal, but I use my wood ash also, is let me take you to my chicken feed station. This is where I ferment my chicken feed. I just threw some more feed and water in there. But one of the things I like doing is taking handfuls of this and dropping it in there. Now, why, you ask? Now, I'm not a doctor, so, you know, this is what I do. I'm not telling you what you should do. This is what I do. A lot of wood ash, when you burn wood, because that's how you get wood ash. Oh my gosh, I was so stupid. <laughs> uh, a lot of wood ash is calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and manganese. These are all things that your chickens need, especially that calcium, because they lay eggs. And eggs are comprised of calcium. So by mixing this up in my chicken feed, I'm feeding them calcium, manganese, Yes, I do use one of those forks. I'm giving them manganese, calcium, phosphorus, all good for their body. But also, I don't know if you ever noticed when there's a forest fire, the animals that leave an area will come back. And you notice that the animals will nibble on the, the burnt tree stumps and stuff like that. You see how it's fermenting? All it is is putting the chicken feed in here with water. And you'll see it bubbling. That's the chicken feed fermenting, uh, the fermentation process. Uh, which makes it better for your chickens also, but I don't know if you ever noticed that that uh, Animals will come by and nibble on the wood that is burned. You know why they're doing that? Charcoal Charcoal is a natural dewormer So by giving my feeding this ash back to my chickens, I'm actually helping to deworm my chickens So this is one way that you can reuse your wood ash that I use it, okay, this is how I use it. And I have noticed that my chickens give more eggs and they'll poop out, you know, their poop will come out black, their uh, manure will come out black, but it's a natural dewormer for your chickens. That's why you oftentimes see animals, deer or even bears, wolves. You'll see them gnawing, I mean, my dogs have done it. I'll, uh, when I'm done burning, I'll watch them go into the fire pit when it's cool and take out pieces of charcoal and gnaw on it because there's a lot of nutrients in that charcoal that uh, they can use. 
Also, the sisters use this for um, uh, their soaps, and you, you heard in the last video, they use it in their uh, cleaning cast iron. Here's another way you can use your charcoal, your ash and charcoal. Remember, it's high in manganese, phosphorus, magnesium. Those are things that your greens can use. So you can simply grab it and throw it in your garden. And charcoal is a slow release. So as the charcoal sits in your garden and slowly breaks down, you know, through rain and then the winds and everything else, it slowly releases its, its nutrients into your soil. You'll get usually darker, greener leaves. Now, during the uh, winter, I dump whole bucketfuls. This is a five gallon metal bucket from one of those surplus stores. Um, I'll dump, after I empty out our stove, I'll dump whole five, once it's cooled of course, whole five gallon buckets of wood ash into my garden. I'll sprinkle it over the garden. The things that are, uh, I, I still may have in the ground like turnips, like these are turnips right here, all purple top turnips. Uh, so turnip is large and purple. I'll keep pouring this in, in the soil. Um, let me see right here. I have some beets just starting up right here. We plant this whole area out and some of the beets are in and some of them are just peeking through the surface because we plant our, we don't plant them all at once, all of our beets at once. And here's some radishes. So, uh, we continue to feed our radishes, our beets, the beets here. And beets here and then our turnips these are some of our root crops we also have carrots growing uh kohlrabi growing but this will do a great job at feeding this ash will do a great job at feeding your soil feeding the plants that are going to be used um oftentimes if we use our outdoor stove uh and we don't remove the ash out within i would say a month or two um, we'll start seeing earthworms in there and we'll have like whole colonies of earthworms Another way you can use your wood ash is let's go to your chicken coop so I'm in the chicken coop right now One of the great ways to use your wood ash is go to your area where your uh, Chickens do their dust baths And just simply throw wood ash there. Why? Because the wood ash will also act, you know, uh, chickens oftentimes get mites or, you know, little annoyances. Well, wood ash can act as a diatomaceous earth for your chickens. Hiya! They can act as a, a diatomaceous earth. Um, they'll come and they'll roll around in this, in this wood ash, and the ash chokes out. Uh, a lot of the pests that may be on your chicken. So you can also use wood ash I, as a diatomaceous earth as a way of removing or helping to alleviate uh, the ticks, um, mites, things like that that will annoy your chickens. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen chickens do dust baths. So there's one area right there. And then the other area that chickens like to do their dust baths are over here. So I'll just throw some wood ash here. And this is an excellent way to use the wood ash. And then they'll come through here also and they'll pick through and eat the uh, charcoal out of this. So these are a couple extra ways to use your wood ash to benefit your homestead instead of uh, dumping it. Wood ash is too valuable. There's too many nutrients in it for you to waste your wood ash. So. Um, just a couple of ideas that you can use, um, whether it be the sticks on your land. You know, a lot of people pile it up out here. They'll pile it up and burn it because it's annoyance. Well, for us, all that stuff is fuel. All of it's fuel. Let me show you. Like right here, this uh, log that's holding the soil up from one of our gardens. Well we bucketed the bark. And this bark is gonna be used for fuel for our cooking station. So don't be afraid to improvise. Don't be afraid to use your mind. Uh, we still got okra coming up.
Hallelujah. Uh, like see all those down trees right there? Uh, the longer posts I'll use for building. Like that's going to get split. But you'll see I have certain posts that I have up. And what I do is I use these for building. I'll coat the bottom with an oil or tar or something like that. But I'll limb them. And you'll see the piles of limbs back there. You'll see the piles of limbs back there. The children have already gathered that. And this, and this is all we use for our cooking. These are posts that I'll finish off and use them for posts, you know, for circling gardens or back down there on the back end of our goat pen, I've used posts in the ground, uh, especially the cedar posts. They do real well because they're so oily uh, in the ground. So don't be afraid to use the land that y'all has given you. Um, you know, most people you notice that like a lot of farmers out here, they'll burn that up and just get rid of it. That's fuel for our cooking station. It's also probably a den for a raccoon or two, but uh, or a possum or something like that. But we're not gonna talk about that right now. <laughs> Anyways, I hope this brings some insight to how, how to use your wood ash. And there's many other ways people, you know, we use, they use the wood ash to make soaps. They use it for cleaning. They use it for your animals. Um, you saw the gardens, the chicken feed. Wood ash is too valuable to just toss it and get rid of it. So use your wood ash. All right, bless y'all. Hope you have a blessed day. I hope you had a blessed, afflicted atonement. And now we're coming to Tabernacles. Also, we're going to have a live stream tonight, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Me and my beloved brethren uh, are going to be discussing uh, some topics. All right, bless y'all. Shalom.